Hello and welcome to Tradecraft Security Weekly. This is episode number 27. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and this week I'm going to be talking to you about pixie boot attacks. So pixie boot attacks are a lot of fun. Um, they are something that are supposed to make, well, so pixie is supposed to make uh, network admin's life easier, but if we can take advantage of um, anything that is trying to, you know, make things easier, then it's all the more fun. So I thought it'd be a, a good episode this week to kind of walk through some of the attacks against against uh, various Pixie Boot environments. Um, I've seen it a number of times. I've exploited it on a number of pen tests, and it's worked out really well in uh, my favor. So let's move right along. So first off, what is what is Pixie? So Pixie is the pre-boot execution environment. Typically, this is used by, like I said, network admins to deploy operating system images to new hosts faster. The idea is that basically you have a, a network server that is now serving up an, an image that uh, an admin has created with all the stuff that they want to be their, their golden image for a system um, to a new host. So whenever whenever they have a new computer come online, they don't have to go and, and you know install the OS and then install AV and then install you know the Office Suite and all this stuff. They can create a golden image of that and then basically host it up, and then all they have to do is bring a bring a host online, tell it to, to network boot. It will reach out to the Pixie server, and and get the get the image from it, and then basically just boot to it. it makes makes life so much easier for for admins. Um, but there are interesting attacks on both the client side, so the, the computer booting, and also the server side uh, from from our you know pen test perspective here. So how does it work? Uh, it, it's kind of, it's really interesting actually. So so Pixie first off, it uses DHCP and TFTP. To, uh, to basically do the entire process. So first off, whenever you boot up and you, you perform a network boot with a client, the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna try to get a, a DHCP address. So D does a DH DHCP discover, finds a DHCP server on the network, the DHCP server responds, um, giving it an offer. Then the DHCP request then says, okay, well, I wanna actually boot to, to a Pixie image. Do you have one for me? And so depending on how the network's set up, uh, sometimes the DHCP server might also be hosting the Pixie image as well in the, in the TFTP server, but uh, that's not always the case. Sometimes like you have the DHCP server pointing to a different TFTP server, and that's kind of what this image here is showing, is that the DHCP server is telling you that the Pixie client, the, the, the client that we're trying to boot to the Pixie image with, is is now having to go to another server, this boot server over here on the right, um, to get the image. So once it does that, it, it connects to the boot server, grabs the uh, grabs the um, the the boot uh, the bootstrap program file, and then runs it. And then basically that is that is all the client needs at that point to now have the operating system that was pre-built with everything else uh, just in, installed right away. Makes it really helpful. Okay, so let's talk about how we could exploit this from the server side of things. So the idea here is that we are connected to a local network and we are now gonna host a malicious uh, evil Pixie server. And with our evil Pixie server, we're gonna host both the DHCP and TFTP server to serve up a malicious boot image so that if there's another host on our network, like um, a thin client or uh, some other host that typically would do a network boot first, Whenever they, they reboot next, they will come to us, hopefully, and uh, you know we'll be able to respond to them and give them the malicious image. So there is a Metasploit module for this called uh, Pixie Exploit, and this specific module will install a interpreter service, it'll disable a firewall, and add a new admin user. So the idea would be the victim computer reboots, gets our image, this, the Metasploit module actually will overwrite um, a service on the Windows host to install the interpreter service so that Whenever it reboots again, it will actually uh, either give us a shell or, or we can do things like, like I said, add a, add a new local admin. And then um, we should RDP to it remotely or connect over SMB share. But this does require that the victim reboot and, um, and also perform a network boot. It would require that they're not just, they're not just booting from their disk, right? Um, so there are a couple of things there that, that do take effort. But like I said, I have seen this before and it could be um, really useful if you're kind of hitting a wall. Um, to try out. Uh, so I, I know Metasploit has had some DHCP server issues, so you might want to try doing the same thing with something like DNS mask and hosting it. Um, my preferred Pixie attacks are more more on the client side of things. I love I love client side Pixie attacks, and I've, I've seen it on a number of, of networks, especially larger networks, um, because there's a lot of admins who really try to to, uh, to to ease their lives by deploying Pixie images across across a network. 
So the first thing we're going to do is like connect our connect our uh, computer again to their local subnet. We're going to set a VM to do what's called a network boot, right? Um, so instead of booting to an actual hard drive, we're going to boot to the network, and that process is is basically performing that that Pixie boot. Uh, uh, request that I, I was talking about earlier where it looks for DHCP server, finds TCP server, gets the image and, and whatnot. So whenever you do that, if a network does have a Pixie deployment uh, available and, and you are able to find that server uh, through just basically, basically just booting a VM to it, um, you can uh, then download and, and basically run a local copy of their golden image. So like you as a pen tester, you don't have any access to anything, but you just boot up a VM and you might get handed the golden image that, that is basically like everything that a normal computer on the network would have. So this is really useful, um, especially if you're like on an onsite where you, you have nothing else. Like, I mean, you might you might have tried, you know, run a responder, might have tried a number of other things, um, but this might be another thing to, to add to your, to your tool list of things to try out on an onsite at least. Uh, so, you know, after you have a, a client, there's a, there's a bunch of things you can do with this. Um, you know, once you have the actual golden image, you can use it as a pivot point. So, you know, try to attack the rest of the network from that host. You can gain really useful information about what they have in their environment. You're going to get, you know, whatever AV they install, you know, do they have silence? They have, you know, carbon black, they have uh, bit nine, all this stuff, right? And you'll be able to kind of figure out a little better the way to proceed with the rest of your attacking from that. Um, the other thing too is I, I've been on a couple pen tests where um, it's been like a kiosk type of thing. So it's it's real fun whenever you get like a uh, like a point of sale um, image, and then you now have to like have fun with like escaping restricted environments. Um, so a lot of times, you know, you can um, like a lot of these like point of sale systems. They just they open up into their point of sale software, and so now you have to like you know play with like trying to escaping the software and stuff, and that can be. A lot of fun and might help you figure out other ways to to escalate and move around the network. Um, so here's a couple things you can try. So after you've after you have booted to the the Windows image immediately when it like if it is a Windows image, <clears throat> first off, it might not be a Windows image. If it is a Windows image, one of the things you can try is hitting Shift F10 while it's performing like the uh, the actual opening setup. So like, you know, if you look on the right here, you see like the typical, you know, Windows opening setup screen, like while it's setting that up, if you hit Shift F10, you can open up a console and then um, it's an administrative console right there. You can add a new local administrator. Um, another idea is after you get the image, you, you know, fully download the image, it's installed. Um, you know, when you boot it up, you're not gonna have a credential to log into it unless you were able to do that previous administrative step. But there are other things you can try if that didn't work. You can mount the drive. So like you could, you could get the image and then actually boot to like a Kali ISO and then use the Kali ISO to actually mount the, the Windows drive and then um, create a new backdoor account or write sticky keys with command.exe to, to, you know, you shift, shift five times and open up a command prompt. You can dump local hashes um, and you can look for other, other information. So let's jump into the demo. So this is, this is, um, this is a little bit of a lengthy demo and I'm gonna end up having to uh, fast forward a lot of it because the way that, like the network boot works, I mean, you'll see. It just, it takes a while sometimes with the Pixie boot setting. So one, one pro tip real quick is if you're doing this with VMware, um, I recommend opening up your VMX file and setting this BIOS.boot delay equals 5000 setting um, in there because that will allow you to uh, whenever you hit play on the virtual machine, it'll give you more time to actually hit the escape key. So you'll see here, like typically right here, that, that would be really fast and it's hard to hit the escape key fast enough sometimes. So that'll give you a little bit more time. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do network boot here. And with the network boot, it's, this is, this is what I was talking about earlier. So this is pretend you're the pen tester on, you just plugged in your network. I'm now booting to an image from the network. In my case on, on my network, I have, um, this open source tool called Fog Project running, where it is actually serving up my Pixie images. And um, this particular tool does have like a username and password here, which you don't have to, I mean, as a Fog admin, I've seen I've seen a ton of articles where they just basically do this and they just put the username and password in here. And you don't even need, like, need to type it in. Um, but in a lot of cases, you would uh, you you wouldn't even get a prompt for a password. A lot of times, like depending on the actual deployment software, you'll just get the image. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna install this golden image now. So this is the pen tester system connected to 
to a uh, an organization subnet where they do pixie deployments i'm now going to run this golden image and what's going to happen now is my virtual machine my pen tester virtual machine is going to download that that pixie image from from uh from the pixie server and this is what can take a while so um we're going to let this run and i will see you in just a moment okay so this is just about finished up here successfully uh, restore the image and now it will reboot the system and this time we're going to let it boot right into the hard drive of our vm at this point which will run windows so this this is what i mentioned earlier whenever you're whenever you get to this point here um wait till it says uh you know setting up the services setting up the os something like that i can't remember what it says exactly but wait till it says that you'll see it right here and then we're going to hit shift f10 right when we see that and then it will pop out our, our nice little command terminal for us. Yeah, see, starting services. So shift F10, and there's our command prompt. Lovely. Okay, so what we can do now is we can do um, we can add a new user to the OS. So this is prior to the OS actually getting fully set up too, which is pretty interesting. Um, so we'll, we'll set a new user called DAFTAC. We'll give them the password of superpass2018, and we will add. Now you'll get a message here that says the um, that there was an error. The user group uh, group account specified cannot be found, um, but the user was successfully created, but could not be added to the, the user's local group, which um, is not actually necessary at this point. So what we can do though is we can net local group administrators, and then at forward slash add, and then we'll throw in DAFTAC in there, and it should add the, uh, the, the new user that we just created called DAFTAC to the local administrators group. So now we can go ahead and close this window and let Windows finish doing its thing. And we'll be back once it's finished, uh, finished its boot and then um, we'll see what happened here. Okay, so now our Windows system has successfully deployed. So you can see that the, the system itself um, the, the image that we got from the network created a user called pilot one, but we also have our, our DAFTAC user here. So if we didn't have pilot one, we'd have to go, um, which we can go in, I'm going to show you a few other tricks here in a second. Um, like let's say that we weren't able to create this DAFTAC user, then there's a couple other things we could do, but um, let's go ahead and see if uh, our super pass 2018 works here. And voila. Okay, so I have powered down the virtual machine. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna boot to the Kali image. And to do that, um, we're gonna edit our virtual machine settings. I've already added a CD drive in here, but if you haven't done that, you can click the add button um, and then add in a CD DVD drive and then point it at a, a, a Kali ISO. So browse to wherever you have a Kali ISO downloaded and um, just point it there and then click okay. Then we're gonna boot up again. And then this time we're going to hit escape and then Point it to our CD DVD drive, CD ROM drive. And then we're gonna go ahead and run the live Kali uh, boot. And so what's cool about this is, you know, with VMware, you have your, your actual hard drive where the the golden image that we downloaded via Pixie boot is now stored. Um, we Let's say that we weren't able to add, you know, the user to the operating system earlier. Um, we, we still have operating system access if we can mount that drive. And so that's what we're gonna do with Kali here. We're gonna use Kali. We're gonna boot Kali on the same system and then mount the drive that is in VMware. So opening up command terminal here, um, what we can run is fdisk-l to list out the various drives. And you can see we've got um, slash dev sda2 here, which is a 32 gig drive. And we're, to mount that, we're going to first um, create a mount location at slash MNT, and let's just call it NTFS. And then we're going to run the mount command, mount dash T NTFS dash 3G slash, and then this is the, the drive number, the, or the partition number, um, and then mount NTFS for the location. Now, if we CD to MNT slash NTFS, we are in the file system. So this is the operating system um, that we were just uh, given from the network. And we could do things like we could go look at, um, let's see, like the Windows System 32. Um, you know, we've got a ton of files in there, right? All the all the, the default Windows stuff. But I mean, if like you wanted to go into config, you could you know password dump um, from the system and SAM files here. Um, we can do the sticky keys attack by basically just copying um, command.exe. 
to um, it's uh, sethc.exe is the sticky keys um, command. So uh, the cool thing here is now we can just reboot the system and we have the sticky keys option. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we just reset. And so we're going to let it actually boot back into the operating system at this point. We're not going to we're not going to run um, Kali this time. Okay. So while we're here, if we just hit shift five times, boom. Now we have an administrative command terminal. How about that? So we could add another user. How about daft hack two super pass 2018 add. And same thing, net local group administrators dat, or forward slash add daft hack two. Okay, command completed successfully. So now um, let's go ahead and reboot again. And similar, similarly, you can you can use um, a couple of the tools to change passwords if you wanted to as well. But in this case, we are going to hopefully be able to log in with our DAFTAC2 user at this point. Aha, there it is, DAFTAC2, super pass 2018, exclamation point. Oh, did I, did I type my password wrong? Come on, that's a super strong password. It's so hard to type that I messed it up. So anyways, now we're gonna be able to log in as an administrator by just modifying the sticky key setting. So another way to get in as an admin. Okay, so um, we have logged in as an admin. And uh, you know, like I said, like there's a lot of things you can do here. I mean, depending on what software is running here, like this might end up being a kiosk and you might now be looking at trying to escape kiosk uh, type of environment. It could be their golden windows image. So now you have the ability to kind of enumerate um, like what what uh, what software is already on the system? What software did they deploy to everything? Are there vulnerabilities in those pieces of software? You could use this as a as a host to um, perform the rest of your recon on the network. So there, there's a lot of things you can do at this point. Um, but for the sake of this video, I think that is it. And um, you know, I hope you enjoyed this one. This is um, this has been episode number 27 uh, for the blue team. Implement a knack. You know, network access control to, to prevent unauthorized devices from, from even connecting to your network. So a lot of this, this type of attack involves me, you know, being physically connected and being able to boot a device. Oh, one, one last thing that I forgot to mention is when you do this with VMware, if you are connecting to a physical network, make sure you're setting that, um, that bridged option. Um, set, set your NAC or your NIC to, to bridged. Um, that way it will hopefully be able to look on the actual LAN that you're connected to. Um, another thing for the blue team, only enable pixie boots on, on like the help desk and imaging subnets. There's no, I mean, reason, unless you're just trying to image everything remotely that you need to be broadcasting, you know, your pixie boot environment everywhere. So if you can just image in one spot or have like a specific list of subnets where you can boot up to those images, that'd be much helpful. So um, that, that's it for this edition of Tradecraft Security Weekly. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, find me on Twitter. I am at DAFTAC, and I'll see you next week.